It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, February 2nd, 2012. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today, sir? I must have the wrong number. Is this Burns' is hardware? Yes, it is. And uh, we have a special <laughs> deal, uh, you know, five-finger discount, two-for-one uh, sales on all appliances. Because, you know, we have a contract with the government. You know, we sell hammers for like 500 bucks. So for the average citizen, Bob, we can make a really good deal for you. I guess. <laughs> Oh, a lot going on in the world today, Bob. And uh, first off, I'd like to talk about the uh, economic situation in the U.S., the European Union, and then um, go into what's happening with uh, Davos. Well, the Davos uh, really should have been named. Uh, let's, let's see now. It's about 35 years old now. And it really should have been uh, named davos dash Bilderberger. <laughs> Uh, these were the most powerful financial players in the world. And they're plotting and scheming uh, how to loot us, take our freedom away from us. I even heard Jamie Dimon, that crook from Brooklyn, uh, say something to the effect, Ben Bernanke has done a fantastic job. Um, this is the garbage ear noise you hear coming out of a thing like that. All the deals were made behind the scenes. Uh, uh, The stuff you saw up front was uh, just dancing. Uh, The only one that probably said anything that was uh, different was George Soros. And uh, uh, he probably feels very powerful as... uh, his uh, his position within the Illuminati. And, you know, uh, he's got a very strong background having worked with the Nazis for so long, you know, sending his own Jewish people off to camp so they could get, get incinerated. Real nice guy. But uh, other than that, there was this, oh, the world's going to be wonderful and the Euro's going to be fixed up and Europe's going to prosper and America's going to prosper and the world's going to prosper. And we just can't tell you how much. Of course, they didn't talk about the trillion dollars that was given by the Fed, Federal Reserve. And it was given to them. They didn't lend it. <laughs> it's laughable. Uh, to the European Central Bank. And, oh, they're coming back for more, too. Uh, it looks like they may be on the sled now for eh, $800 billion to a trillion. Uh, I'll know when I get the latest figures in. They're going to have another so-called auction or some stupid thing like that. But anyway, um, Europe is uh, very happy uh, that they got at least a trillion to lean, lean back on. And if they want to fractionalize it, they can have 10 trillion. And if they don't want to do that, which I don't think they will, uh, they get the Federal Reserve and give them another trillion. Why not? I mean, gee, print and price the presses and the... Uh, Digital money is running all night long. So there wasn't anything unusual there. Uh, Same old thing that you'd expect from the Illuminati uh, to tell you uh, by beating their breasts how powerful they were. And and that's what we get. Um, As far as the economy, again, it's going to do a little bit better this year than expected. One and a half to two percent growth, and QE three will do that alone. And of course, money sloshing over from the European banks into treasuries that that will help as well. And um, and that might last a year and a half. I, I don't know yet, but we got a year here. And unemployment's not going to get better. And. Uh, Interest rates officially are not going to go up. Um, the money uh, from QE3 will go to the banks. 
and then from the banks, it'll go into perhaps purchasing the bonds that are being rolled over and new issuance, which in some instances like Italy is preposterous. And I think the only way they can take down part of that uh, is by uh, having the uh, European Central Bank uh, buy the paper. The, the, the ECB is going to be a, a junior version of the Federal Reserve. Uh, the U.S. and the Anglo-American profile uh, are running things now. And they let the Europeans uh, do it, and they couldn't come to any positive solution and still stay in office. And uh, so it's not going to be a bad year. Uh, inflation will be higher. Renegi's running around saying it's 2.8%. Everybody must laugh at him, but he doesn't care. Uh, he'll probably uh, die with a fortune of something like 30 or 50 million. That's all he cares about. And he doesn't care about all the lives he's destroyed. And uh, I was just uh, talking with someone, and I said, you know, people. They just can't understand how people can be so evil. It's almost impossible for them to countenance such diabolical evil. I mean, these people are at the bottom. Uh, and, I, and I think, and you hate to say this, but I think the murderers in prison are better than these people. Because these people kill millions of people, not one or two. Not that murderers are good guys. I'm just trying to make a comparison. And uh, <laughs> again, I just thought of something I think is funny. Uh, Joe Arapio down in <coughs> Arizona, he's got all the prisoners on the road picking up the garbage from that the illegal aliens leave behind. And um, he's got them all in, I guess it's pink dresses and pink underwear. <laughs> no, he, he, I think he talks too much, and uh, he saved himself a lot of grief. I think he's a brilliant guy. Anybody that's the head of narcotics and uh, DEA down in wherever it was, Columbia or whatever, I can't remember the country. And, uh, and of course, the ACLU is after him because they want everybody drugged up, a bunch of meatheads. And there's so much good they can do, but they don't. Occasionally they do. But uh, it's that political horizon that they have. And much of what they say often is true. Uh, just, you know, you got to get together with people and say, hey, let's make a deal. Uh, you want to stop this, we want to stop that. Well, you know, let's make a compromise here and let's stop it, whatever it is. Anyway, I happen to think of that what I was thinking. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're going to have a decent year, that's it. And uh, all these people that are running around telling us that the sky is falling, um, I think they're going to be cor incorrect again. And... Um, that's too bad, but um, that's the road they've chosen to take, and that's okay. Well, I mean, I, I sincerely hope that that's the case, that we still do have a little bit more time left because we need as much time as we can, Bob, because there's still plenty of people out there, you know, struggling to get by, you know, just to you know, pay the everyday expenses, you know, food, gas, you know, utilities, the mortgage, and the car note. And I know a lot of people want to, you know, start preparing for the worst case scenario, you know, prepping and storing food and all that stuff and buying gold and silver, which both are up right now. Gold at what seventeen fifty eight and silver at thirty four dollars forty two cents. And but I mean it, it's a good thing that it isn't 
gotten to that point yet. And, I mean, I sincerely hope that we don't see uh, the collapse coming for at least another couple of years. But as you and I both know, Bob, that's inevitable. What you're saying is correct. It is inevitable. And, uh, oh, we've got time. Uh, I, I thought it was much more pressing. They have expedited their program, but we do have time. And uh, how much? I don't know. But if I had to guess, I'd say probably a couple of years. And it'll probably be accompanied by a war. And they'll draft all these young boys and girls and kill them. Get them out of the way and too many people in the world. Yeah, and that, that's what's the really sad part is you, you know that they're, they're planning something big. And maybe not this year with Iran. But we do know that the tensions are higher than ever. I mean, I, I came across several articles earlier. I mean, here's one. The Israeli vice prime minister said that the military strike uh, can hit all the uh, Iran's uh, nuclear facilities. Then the Israeli military intelligence chief also came out he claiming that Iran now has enough enriched uh, radioactive material to produce four nukes. And to top that off, the United States intelligence is saying that Iran could launch terror attacks on America. So, Bob, the war drums are definitely uh, beating louder than ever. It reminds me of the boy who called Wolf. And when the real Wolf comes around, you're screwed because no one's going to listen to you. And that's a position that the, the Illuminists are in today. They're overplaying it. Uh, they had to lay off for a while, but anyway, let them continue to do what they're doing. It doesn't mean anything. I see a senator, the senators have a secret meeting with the head of the Mossad in Washington. I mean, what kind of country do we have? They have secret meetings. I mean, these people are supposed to represent us. No, they don't. I mean, that's, that's the sad reality. And, and speaking of that, secrecy, uh, I'll see. Well, I came across another article, Bob, uh, something that happened up on uh, the Capitol earlier. Uh, the uh, guy behind uh, Gasland, that documentary that exposes uh, natural gas fracking, uh, he was arrested uh, at a, what, a, one of those hearings because the Republicans didn't want you know, their hearing videotaped. I, I mean, I, th I thought we had a right to know what was going on in our government. I mean, and now they're, they're actually arresting people that go in with video cameras and <laughs> videotape it so that the public can see what's happening? Yep. It's Every just, totalitarian society is like that. Yeah, and it's just heartbreaking to see that it's rolling out in front of us. And it's just so obvious now. And it's just amazing how many people have their heads in the sand and, and don't seem to realize how bad things are. I mean, the, the bottom hasn't fallen out yet, but the pieces are falling into place. That's true. Just It's just crazy that you can actually arrest people now for videotaping something that the public should have a right to view. Every single hearing that they have, everything that's done in our name, through our tax dollars, should be out in the open, in my opinion. Well, that's true. But they do what they want to do. And until we stop them, that's what they're going to do. And, and that's it's not, it's, it's in all corners of life today. Well, that's very true, Bob. They are coming at us from all the angles. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And one of the ways that we are really pushing forward to try and curtail this, you know, disregard for the will of the people by our elected body in Congress is by trying to change <laughs> the, the, the body itself. And, you know, we've been spearheading that with uh, the Ron Paul revolution for the past four years now. And what are your thoughts, Bob, about what transpired in the Florida primary? I mean, especially since now the GOP establishment and the talking heads of the mainstream media are all coming out saying that the race is over, Mitt Romney's going to be the nominee, even though there's, what, 46 states still left? Well, they're trying to fill the public's head with misinformation as usual uh, so that uh, they can set a precedent that people will start thinking, well, there's no sense of watching all this garbage anymore. Nobody's got a chance. 
This guy is 95% funded by Wall Street, and so he's going to be the guy. Well, we'll see what happens with the delegates, and uh, we'll see what happens with Ron Paul. I mean, he may be forced to change his mind and go to another ticket, which would be devastating for the Republicans. Because then you have uh, people running that would have normally never run for other offices. So, um, but there's a question that every race is fixed. I mean, you know, uh, New Gingrich has no money to speak of. Um, he has no uh, campaign, really at all. They all quit him about a year ago. And uh, he's pretty glib, which gets him by. But how do you come from 2% to 25 in two days? The same thing that happened with Santorum. 2% to 25. It's obvious it's rigged. And then Diebold comes out and says it's going to be Romney. And the votes haven't even entered nor counted yet. I mean, it's, it's all propaganda, and nothing's ever been done to change the voting by machine. You know, most of these small countries, they don't use machines. It's all hand ballot. Now, they can steal the ballots, throw them away. That's true. But um, it's harder to cheat. That's very true. I mean, it's just like what Stalin said back in the day, that... You know, it doesn't matter, you know, who casts the votes. What matters is who counts the votes. But I would much rather have paper ballots with a, with a trail, a record, than with these electronic voter machines, which have proven to be unreliable at best and easily manipulated. And they use them because they manipulate them. And, I, I mean, I know that there's a growing movement out there of people throughout the country, and different areas, and I, and I applaud this effort by people to get the electronic voter machines out of all the elections. I think they need to be chunked, you know, just, you know, I don't know what, I guess recycled or whatever, have them melted down to scrap and I guess sold to China since that's one of our biggest <laughs> uh, beneficiaries from all the scrap we sell overseas. So, I mean, we don't need to be uh, doing that, I think. I don't think we need to be having these electronic voter machines, they're wrong, and there's just some things that machines can never replace. And that's true. It's called a human element. Now, they get this, they get this country so tied down that I am enormously fearful of what will happen after the next election if one of the accepted individuals that gets elected uh, I think this is uh, a program that they, they're they waiting for, uh, that they're going to put into action, and they're going to make big strides, and uh, they're going to attack us on all fronts. I think in Congress, one of the first things they'll go after is the seal of retirement money. I think that's coming next year. You have four bills in there and the uh, and House and the Senate, and I think they're going to use them. They'll go lightweight at first, and then they'll go heavyweight. Of course, all these sanctimonious uh, politicians that get up there and say, oh, this is wonderful, and the government uh, can use the money and all this garbage. <laughs> Basura. Yeah. That's, that's a word in Spanish. Yeah, and it's... <sighs> It just frustrates me, Bob. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's sad because even if Ron Paul gets somehow manages to get the GOP nomination and win, and I think he is the only candidate that can actually beat Obama, the only one that can rally any support behind him, the others are more the same. I just don't see the people, you know, you know, running to the polls on Election Day in November for uh, President Gingrich or President Romney, especially after uh, Romney said that he's not too concerned about the very poor when most Americans are getting poorer and poorer of each passing day. What we need here in this country is not only a President Paul, but we need to have people start running for federal, state, and local offices because that's the way we're truly going to turn things around. And we're going we're to accomplish that to a greater extent 
uh, by this program and others like it. Uh, radio is a wonderful instrument, and it has been since its inception. And um, even if we can make them understand that there's an ulterior force out there, uh, you know, my big beef, and I talk about it all the time with the newsletter writers, none of them ever talk about the Illuminati. They are either too uneducated or dumb to know about it, well, they're afraid to talk about it. I mean, that's where all this stems from. I mean, you can't have a solution for anything unless you understand the historical problem and how it fits today. Uh, that's, uh, there's an enormous problem there. You know, that's why getting a list of the people that went, and I'm sure we'll get one from somebody, who went to Davos. Um, and write their names in, and beside it, all the organizations they belong to, and a brief summary. You know, former uh, prime minister of such and such a place, or presently uh, secretary of the treasury in such and such a country. I mean, that would be really good. If I, I can't do it. I don't have time. Believe me, I don't have time. And... Um, that would be very good because then you could write and you could say, look, can't you see how these people are all tied in? Anthony Sutton was really good at that. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. And um, and the John Birch Society was very good at it as well, you know, presenting these kinds of facts. But I think... We're going to be able to accomplish an awful lot. And even if we don't elect the people who we'd like to, um, we still have our weapons. So if they want to take their best shot, let them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're trying to resolve things here peacefully and bring about you know a restoration of the Constitution Bill of Rights here at home and, and hold people accountable to the court of law no matter what level they are in society doesn't matter if they're at the bottom or at the very top. If they commit a crime, they should be punished for it. They shouldn't be allowed to, you know, buy off people and get away with, you know, all sorts of awful, terrible things. And a moment ago, you, you discussed that, the comparison between, you know, people that are in jail right now, convicted murderers. And I agree. I think that they're bad, those people, but they're nothing compared to all these other monsters that are running around free that have – thousand dollar suits and fly around in multi-million dollar jets and have lavish homes and condos and yachts and can I mean, the sky's the limit for them they're like many demigods on the planet and those are the real demons that we have to contend with bob well uh, there's always the problem of, of gout by eating too much caviar as well Oh, Bob. <laughs> oh, Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And, yeah, I mean, it's just there's so many things going on, and it's amazing that we, we do have this growing movement. And I think you're right about that. I think it would be a fantastic idea if we had somebody out there. And I'm sure there is people out there keeping tabs, you know, documenting all these people, all these puppets and governments in the U.S. and in Europe and other places who attend – you know, Davos, the Bilderberg Group, Trilateral Commission, Bohemian Grove, and they're just jotting it down. You're keeping record. Okay, this so-and-so was here, here, and here, and here. And if the time ever comes where these people are held responsible, it's going to be used against them. You're right. And that adjudication could very well be coming. And they know what we talk about. They listen to these programs. And uh, they know we got in for them. Yeah, and they're trying everything they can to, you know, <laughs> belittle us and stop us. But I, I don't think they're going to be able to because, I mean, with each passing day, more and more people are, are waking up from their sleep. They're, they're realizing that there's something wrong in the world as things continue to get worse and worse as Congress and other governments continue to do more and more things that really don't make any sense until you, you, you get past the veil and you say, wait a minute, that's why they're doing this. That's why they're passing more of these laws. That's why they're you know, giving breaks to corporations and making it harder on the people 
because it's all intentional. And this came out today as well, Bob. The U.S. no-fly list of suspected terrorists has doubled in the past year. Another example how I think the government's continuing to clamp down further upon the people. It jumped from 10,000 names up to 21,000 names, and that's officially according to the government, and about 500 of those names are U.S. nationals. And uh, I saw an interview from 60 Minutes with what the new, uh, the current what the defense sec, Panetta, you know, he was over at the, uh, the CIA before uh, Obama moved him over. You know, he's saying that, hey, if you're a suspected terrorist, if we suspect you of terrorism, we can kill you. Well, that's how the president told us that, too, because he's already done that. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of uh, insanity we're dealing with. But that's okay. You know, uh, they had crime trials at Nuremberg, and if we get the opportunity, we'll have our own. Uh, they might be called the New York uh, City crime trials or something. That's apropos because there's probably more crooks there than any place else in the country per capita. Oh, boy, when I see some of those guys get up there, they are smooth. That's the way they are. You know, they're very charming. They're very good at lying through pe their teeth and whispering sweet nothings in people's ears. And I, w I would advocate, Bob, having the uh, trial in Philadelphia at Independence Hall. I think that would be a more fitting location. Well, I don't know if it's big enough for it, but. I know, but it's a nice, you know, sentimental historical significance. Plus, you could put video cameras in there and, <laughs> and videotape, and you'll put you know, stream it throughout the world to see <laughs> these guys <laughs> just standing there all nervous, awaiting their fate, just like the Nazis did at Nuremberg. Well, uh, Nuremberg uh, was something that had to be done because the Germans went too far, or I should say, uh, the uh, people who ran Germany went too far. Uh, but, you know, um, People do strange things. And I, I think in that regard, we're definitely going to see history repeat itself. I don't know if you had a chance to watch the uh, maybe some highlights from the Obama interview that was done by YouTube and Google+. Plus. One of the questions brought up, Bob, was regarding these drones and how they've killed a number of innocent civilians throughout the Middle East. And you know, Obama was like, well, that's not the case. You know, we, we have you know, very low casualty rates, yet the evidence against that is astounding how many innocent men, women, and children have been slaughtered because of these drones. It's just another obvious, blatant lie by Obama. And they want to get rid of the uh, excess, what they think is a subhuman population. And that's why they're doing that. And Hitler used to call them Untermenschen, and that means subhuman. Untermenschen. Under man. And, that, and see, that, that's a sad reality that we live in, in this country alone, because we're supposed to be a country about tolerance and racial mm -hmm. equality and freedom and liberty for all, but the mainstream media programming and the establishment have actually used racism to rally people behind them, just like the Nazis did. But in this case, it's Muslims that are in the crosshairs. You have us killing innocent Muslims in the Middle East. You have you know, always this propaganda machine about, oh, you never know. See something, say something. You never know when we're going to be attacked and all this fear-mongering, which has gone on for far too long now. And the neocons just don't understand this, and average Republicans don't grasp this idea either that Ron Paul talks about, how we don't need to be over there. We don't need to be doing what we're doing because they have this built-in racism, and that's, that's the truth. I mean, I, I hate to call it anything that's not, Bob, but it's the fact that We've been programmed as a society to be racist against Muslims. And before that, we were programmed to be racist about other people. I mean, most of the people who were listening didn't live in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. I mean, just among people who'd come from Europe, you know, the Irish were mixed and the Italians were Dagos and uh, the Polish people were... Uh, the subject of endless jokes that went on for years and years, all of them racist. And uh, so it's part of our culture, unfortunately. And it's a horrible thing. And once again, it's done by design. If you understand the, you know, the, the big picture, 
they love to divide people against each other, whether it's regarding sports teams or, you know, philosophical, political, religious beliefs or, you know, the pigment of our skin. It's a divide and conquer tactic. That's right. Hatred. Horrible thing. I think probably jealousy is even worse. They definitely work hand in hand because, I mean, with jealousy, you know, is you know, breeds hatred and vice versa. So I think they are a very twisted, evil, symbiotic relationship there between those two emotions. But I think that does lead to, I think that in greed leads to the, the worst natures of humanity. It's a good point. Very good point. And it's just, I, I mean, I hope that we get to the day, Bob, eventually, where we can accept each other for our differences and say, you know what, you're different, you're different, but you know what, we're all human. We all deserve the right to live and be free and live our lives the way we so choose to. One another, another reason why I'm a big Ron Paul supporter, because he believes in individual rights. And we, we have to get to that point. We have to get to the point where we respect each other or else eventually it's going to get to the point where the elite are going to win because they'll continue to pit us against each other and carry out more wars, more bloodshed, and eventually we know where that's going to lead. It's going to lead to a global thermonuclear holocaust. Well, that's a, an overall viewpoint, and it's a good one, but uh, there's so many uh, smaller viewpoints and things that are going on that we're exposed to, and they go on every day. And um, that fractionalization that you were talking about. Well, you're absolutely right, Bob. I mean, there's definitely many little uh, things at work, and it, it all compiles into different directions. And, you know, it, it leads to the end goal for the Illuminati, as we both know, you know, order out of chaos. You know, their, their vision of a tyrannical, authoritarian, one-world government where they control everything. Well, they're close to it, probably 70% of the way there. And they got the most important things, I think, in place. So they're going to keep on pushing. Yeah, they're going to continue to push, but the good news is we continue to push back. So we're awake. We're waking up more people. You've been doing it for the past number of decades now, along with many other great people. And I think we're not going to give up, and I think they know that. And sooner or later... Uh, the jig is going to be up for them. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And I came across this as well, something worth mentioning. Uh, Eric Holder, Attorney General, claims that he knew nothing about Fast and Furious, uh, claiming that there's no attempt of any kind to cover it up. Meanwhile, back in 2009, Holder's number two man, Assistant Attorney General Brewer, uh, called uh, Operation Fast and Furious a terrific idea. So, Bob, I guess killing a whole bunch of innocent men and women and children in Mexico is terrific. And a border, one of our Border Patrol men who uh, was murdered with one of those weapons, and which is a terrible tragedy. I, I think that the amount that they're suing the federal government for, if I'm not mistaken, is $344 million. And I hope wow. they win the suit. Yeah, me too, Bob. I mean, I hope that that happens. But more importantly, I would like to see some, you know, real criminal charges against uh, Attorney General Eric Holder and everybody that obviously knew about it and played a part in Operation Fast and Furious. And we do know that it wasn't just the Obama administration behind this. It was it started actually in the Bush administration. So there's definitely a list of characters that are guilty of what's been transpiring in Mexico. Meanwhile, they, they use it as another excuse to blame it on gun owners, claiming that we can go and buy these machine guns and grenades and rocket launchers at a local gun shop or at a, one of these uh, big you know, monthly events where they have you know, gun and knife shows. They say, oh, well, that's where the guns are coming from. No, they're not. <laughs> it would be interesting to see the ultimate testimony of the gun dealers because this is going to go further, or at least I think it will. Uh, just because Holder just sits up there and lies uh, doesn't mean they're going to get away with it. I didn't see the questioning of Corzine today. I'll have to wait for that, I guess. It's so damaging, they probably deliberately didn't run it. 
And, and that might have been the hearing that we were talking about a moment ago that uh, that one of that, that journalists that was behind Gasland got arrested for. I think that might have been it, Bob. And, yeah, it, it's just sad because chances are Corzine's probably going to get off, unfortunately, another criminal that, you know, should be behind bars right now along with the rest of them. And until we get our priorities straight and start focusing more on the white-collar criminals as opposed to the lower-level blue-collar criminals, I mean, they're criminals too, and they should be brought to justice for their crimes. But what they do is nothing and almost insignificant compared to what the John Corzines and Eric Holders are doing. And that's true. You get somebody who walks into a store and they say, I got a gun. Give me your money. They collect $500 and walk out, and the police are standing there. And off they do, off they go for seven to nine years. Uh, this guy steals billions, billions stolen, and nothing is done. I have an attorney general that's in on it. I mean, th- these things just don't happen. It takes lots and lots of people to make things happen. And everybody's going to know about it that's involved in it. Uh, conspiracy consists of two people or more. And, and that's what we have. And a lot of people that are in the mainstream media, you know, the average you know, brain-dead zombie jellyfish sheeple out there say, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist, uh, blah, blah, blah. You wear tinfoil hats and you, know, you, you show them the evidence and say, look, this is obvious that these people had planned this. They were behind this. They... <laughs> they worked out this scheme. I mean, it's a conspiracy. And that it is. I once had an attorney tell me, a um, big drug dealer, wanted to get out of the business, and but he wanted to be clean. He sent this attorney, who I was talking to, to the IRS and said, uh, well, I have a client, and um, he's a big-time drug dealer. And uh, he wants to leave the business, but he wants to be clear with you guys. And uh, how much is it going to cost? And it was the cost was eight hundred million dollars. And the the drug dealer kept about five billion. But this is the sort of thing that goes on all the time: the legalization of crime. And that's, that's the bag that we're into. That's just amazing that. If you have the right amount of cash, you can get away with almost anything in this world. And it just shows you exactly where the mindset of these people are. And I mean, they, <laughs> it's just hilarious that that was one of the big reasons why they went after Al Capone was because he, you know, didn't you know, pay his cut to the IRS. <laughs> so they made an example of him. And, you know, hey, if, as long as you're paying our share, you know, hey, we'll let you continue doing business. No big deal. It's like a smaller level mafia outfit, you know, you know, you know, kicking a few bucks upstairs to the much larger and more dangerous one. There's always been endemic corruption. But uh, I don't, in, in a so-called democracy, I don't think it's ever been any worse than it is in the United States today. It's just terrible. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't even know what to call this anymore. I mean, they, they, you know, people have that debate. Oh, it's a democracy, republic. I, I don't know if it's anything. I don't know if it's any resemblance of what the founders envisioned for this country to be because of the way things are operating now, especially when you, you have now naked body scanners going to be deployed at the Super Bowl coming up this Sunday. Uh, that article is at InfoWars if anyone wants to check it out. And uh, this other one, a TSA agent at JFK – Stole five thousand dollars from a passenger. This is coming from, uh, I guess, the NYPD, and it just shows you, you know, what kind of agencies, what kind of people we have in uniform, you know, <laughs> you know, trying to secure our rights and freedoms by groping, molesting, and robbing us. It's unbelievable, really unbelievable. And it that just doesn't sound like something that would happen in a democracy or a free constitutional republic, Bob. It just doesn't. No, and that's why people are moving more and more into gold and silver, coins, bullion, and shares, because they don't trust the system, and they figure that's the safest place to be. And so it's showing up in the numbers. Some countries, it's it's extremely difficult. 
to get um, to get coins, and um, and that's been going on for some time. So gold is going to you know stay on its way upward. And with our recommendations on the shares, uh, people have done fantastically. Uh, of course, the longer you're in, the better off you are. But um, I think that the realization is coming, especially with, from people who wouldn't have considered this sort of thing, but something clicked them off, like the three primaries we just had. All of them rigged. I mean, anybody that doesn't think they are rigged, you know, there's something wrong with them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was very suspicious how that transpired. And I just, I mean, I, I really hope that Ron Paul does good this coming Saturday in uh, Nevada, Maine. And he should because he's, he's spent a lot of time and effort and money in those states. Plus, there's, from what I've been told within the Ron Paul campaign, is that we have a very strong pro Ron Paul foothold in Nevada, and so Ron Paul, while tense and circumstances, should actually win his first couple of states coming up this weekend. But you never know. Well, not when everything's rigged. Yeah, it's just like the stock market, and it's rigged everywhere, all over the world. It's our government. Your government is your enemy. Yeah, I mean, it's just sad it, we we focus so much on this external threat while the real menace the real enemy of the american people is all the way there in foggy bottom and washington dc the den of crooks that is the real enemy of the people you, you go by the definition of terrorism and it fits those guys perfectly they're terrorists that's right Man, I mean, technically, if you go by all the police state laws they've enacted, you know, the, you know, the, what, the Patriot Act, Department of Homeland Security, <laughs> and what, the latest one, of course, the, in the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, they're the ones sh who should be getting rounded up by the military, not the American citizens. That's right. Well, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. And, and nowadays, their definition of terrorism is becoming, you know, basically whatever they suit it to be. I mean, at first it was, you know, radical Muslims in the Middle East, and now they're starting to lean towards anybody that speaks out against the government or a member of any type of organization, like in the Tea Party, Libertarian, Ron Paul supporters, anyone that talks about the Constitution, believes in freedom and liberty, owns and buys gold and silver, are anti-UN, anti-New World Order. That's becoming the new definition of what a terrorist is. And you beat people out there, you better listen. And I know you're going to say, well, I never did anything, so they can't do anything to me. I got news for you. You don't have to do anything. They'll do it to you anyway. I know how the government thinks. I mean, you're absolutely correct on that one, Bob. I mean, think about all the people that were rounded up in Nazi Germany. Most of those people did nothing to the government of Germany. Most of the people there were like, well, what, what am I getting moved and relocated out of my nice home to, to the Warsaw Ghetto for? I didn't do anything. What am I getting put on a train for? I didn't do anything. What am I getting put in this camp for? I didn't do anything. 99% of them did nothing to the Nazi government. But they still got gassed anyways. Or machine gun or whatever. You know, the Jews fought in the First World War. And... Uh, and we're well, we're well accounted for, so to speak. And for them and the and the government to pick them out as the number one target it was a horrible thing to do. And these are good citizens, uh, uh, quality people for the most part, and people that helped make Germany what it was. And but you know. Uh, they needed a goat, and the goat was the mysterious, different Jewish person. And it's it's a tragedy. Uh, war is always tragedy. There's nothing good about it, even if you win. That's very true, because the only real winners in the end are the people that are profiting you know, off off the buildings of the 
you know, machines and weapons of war, that's the only ones that ever end up winning at the end of the day. The people never win because they, it costs them one way or the other. If they're on the winning side, it costs them money to keep to fight the war. And more importantly, it costs them, you know, the toll and blood from their sons and daughters who go off to, you know, fight these these wars that, you know, most of them are pointless and could have been avoided in, entirely. And it's sad because it, it wasn't just, I mean, the Jews were the huge portion of those that were rounded up and slaughtered by the Nazis, but they went after other groups as well. They went after gypsies. They went after homosexuals. They went after, let's see, the mentally and physically uh, handicapped. So, I mean, they, I mean, after they were done with the Jews, they would have just picked another group to focus their attention on as well. And there were a lot of Christians that were exterminated as well, <coughs> especially people who were in the clergy. <clears throat> and that's I thought true. it was uh, interesting that Schumacher, who was the head of the Socialist Party in Germany prior to the war, he went to a camp, worked, and uh, he came back and ran for office after the war in 1947-48. And um, I was there not too long after that, so I know a lot of the characters but anyway, uh, if you let them, they'll do it. If you let them, they will do it. Exactly. And the moral of the story, I think, Bob, is that while there are some people out there that listen to us and get a good laugh off this, you know, this will never happen here. The first thing is you've got to learn from history because it always repeats itself. And secondly, if they do carry this out, if they do round up those of us like you, like Bob and myself and others, Eventually, they're going to come after you as well. It's only a matter of time. That's how these people work, just like the Nazis, just like you know, those types in North Korea, just like in the Soviet Union. They all have that mindset. They go after one group, destroy that group, then they focus their attention on another one. And that's for sure. I noticed today that um, two paintings that had been pilfered by Hermann Göring during the war were given back finally after all these years to the rightful Jewish owners. And I think that's wonderful. I mean, definitely. I mean, it's, it's good that that finally transpired. But, I mean, you can just imagine how much stuff, how much gold and precious family heirlooms that were stolen that will never see, see their, the, you know, the, Families, original owners, or their anything again, they're still probably in the, the clutches of all these different, you know, heirs. <laughs> and it's just sad that, you know, so many lives were ruined and lost. And it's just eye opening, Bob, to see that this could very easily happen in our own lifetimes. And then the people had to contend uh, at the end of the war with the Russians, who were really barbaric. And, and that's the problem. People never really think about what's coming at the end of the road. They always think about the, the small picture, how it's okay to oppress these people. It's okay to go in and invade these countries and do this and do that. And they, they never think about the, the cause and effect. And that's my fear with what's happening with our country and is that eventually, you know, we're going to pay for our sins over the past couple of decades. Bob, we've got about a minute left. How can people get the International Forecaster? Uh, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. We publish on Wednesdays and Saturdays. usually runs about 35, 40 pages each time. We also have a hard copy for those who are not on the Internet that goes out twice a month. And everything you need to know each week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. That's the international F O R E C A S T E R dot com or the www dot I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com int forecaster dot com or if you choose and you have some questions, you can email us and we answer everybody's questions. You can get copies of the publications. And also, you can get a copy of our report, latest report, on gold and silver shares, uh, which is done quite handsomely. 
And uh, you can do that by going to Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at Intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to call toll-free, that's 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. You can get either copy there. And if you'd like to become a subscriber, that's the place to go. They have a deal offered there, a free one-year subscription. Take advantage of it. It's a terrific deal. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Well, thank you, and thank you all for listening.